Hello, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to another webinar in the BARTS 900 series. And my guest on this occasion is our very own uh, Will Palin. Good to see you again, Will. Oh, thank it's... you, Robert. It's very nice to be here. And it's nice to have an opportunity to update the Friends on Progress. It's been a little while, hasn't it, since we last had the pleasure of talking to uh, another guest about BARTS heritage and about all aspects of BARTS that we've been enjoying over the last three or four years now. Um, and that time interval simply reflects the fact that we've all been so jolly busy uh, here uh, back at the mothership. And we hope to bring you an essence of that here in the next uh, 50, 55 minutes or so. Uh, and obviously, Will is the man to, to really bring us up to speed on that. Now, we've got an incredibly diverse audience joining us tonight. We've got members of the, the nursing fraternity, the medical fraternity, the wider BARTS community. Uh, we've even got a couple of blue badge uh, tours uh, joining us because, of course, sharing the, uh, the whole aspect of our heritage project has been absolutely key, not only within the hospital, but also uh, to wider members of the public. Uh, and we'll be bringing you some uh, exciting news about, about how they can uh, get involved uh, in due course. Uh, now, don't forget, uh, we really welcome your uh, questions and we'll uh, try and answer them as best we can. So do make uh, use of the Q&A button, uh, which is in the menu, typically at the bottom of your screen, although you might have slid it elsewhere. And uh, yes, just, uh, just tap away. Uh, and uh, Will and I will be uh, will try and uh, answer the, some of those during the presentation, uh, or we'll uh, we'll do a wrap up uh, right at the end. So, without further ado, well, hang on a minute, Will, because of course we're, we're sitting in a new room, aren't we? We're not sitting in our old offices up at the top of the North Wing. So, so tell us where we are. Well, uh, I mean, you'll know more about the, the recent history of this room, but we're in the ground floor of the North Wing on the west side. Um, and this room um, is actually leased to Queen Mary, um, the, the, the teaching university, and they're kindly allowing us to occupy it for the duration of our projects. And behind us are these wonderful donor boards, um, sort of overspill from the Great Hall above. And these are um, people who have subscribed to the Samaritan Fund, and there are three boards um, behind us on the uh, west wall. So just for a bit of guidance, imagine you come in through the Henry VIII's gate, you're heading down to the archway under the Great Hall. On the right-hand side, opposite the door to what has been the museum, the right-hand side, back in the day, this space was uh, part of the administration service for uh, for the nurses here at Barts. Uh, and now, as Will has ably described, it's it's leased to, uh, to Queen Mary University, the uh, the medical college, uh, who kindly let us have this space, this glorious space? Because uh, nice. let's face it, we're uh, uh, we're spoiled here, aren't we? We can we can uh, do our work, we can have meetings. Um, we have a whole new mem uh, members of the team who joined us, and we brought you news of them uh, uh, in our most recent e shots. So, um, without further ado, let's uh, let's get started, shall we? So, I'll, I'll uh, if I can, I'll just put back up the uh, the slide deck. Well, um, um, I'm conscious it's been a while since um, we've um, given a, an update on the project. I thought I would start with just a summary of what the Sharing Start Historic Barts project is all about. Um, uh, the, um, the project on the North Wing entails the complete conservation and repair of the envelope of the building. So the stonework, the windows, the ironwork, the roof, importantly, um, and the two great spaces, the Hogarth Stair and the Great Hall. Um, the project started in January this year, um, and I'll be showing some slides of um, work in progress, and we are um, aiming to complete in the autumn of 2025, so the autumn of next year. Um, and uh, as part of the project, um, we will be opening up the building site in a very controlled and safe way to members of the public, um, where you'll be able to come on special tours and, um, and climb the scaffolding and see the conservation work underway and more of that slightly later. In terms of cost, the first phase of works is about 9.5 million. Um, over half of that has come from the National Lottery Heritage Fund, um, who have been a wonderful supporter of this project. Um, Another big chunk has come from the Voluntary Board, um, one of the BART's charities, 
and uh, also um, about 800,000 from the City of London, partly through the City Bridge Trust and partly through um, the, the Neighbourhood Fund. And that will be going towards the um, very exciting programme of activities and public engagement um, uh, work that we're going to be doing as part of the project. Now, of course, it's important to remember that although uh, we have nine and a half million pounds, not in the bank, but ready to uh, as part of our fund, this is only phase one of the project, isn't it? And there is a great deal more to be done. Uh, we, we can't simply draw the line. Uh, and that is why we do tend to mention money quite often, don't we? Yes, this is the first phase. It's the discrete phase of work. So we can complete these works. The building will look splendid. The building will be operational. The Great Hall will look magnificent and will be available again for the private hire as well as all the other activities and functions. But there is a lot more that um, we could and, 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 and want to do, um, particularly involving the archive and the museum, which are uh, largely untouched by the first phase of works, and uh, indeed the gatehouse, um, which um, is also leased to us, Bart's Heritage, um, for 150 years, along with the North Wing. Um, so there's potentially at least another 10 million pounds that we could put into this building. And we're hoping to sort of, the momentum of the current project will um, uh, inspire um, other people to come and support us and see the project through to its ultimate conclusion. Okay, well, let's get cracking because the uh, the casual visitor of the Barts will now see quite a radical change now that the heavy lifting has started. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is the north wing um, facing the square, um, uh, the, 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 the north side of the square, um, as it would have looked at the end of last year. Um, and this is how it is looking at the moment. So um, a huge scaffolding is um, enveloping the building from all sides. Um, it's a major piece of engineering in itself. And for those of you interested in scaffolding, um, one, of the, one of the hardest things to resolve was um, to ensure that it was strong enough, i.e. that the exterior floors um, around the building were um, safe and strong enough to take the weight of the scaffolding. So there was a huge amount of investigation, sort of ground investigations, plate testing where you load great weights onto plates to check that the, the ground isn't going to collapse underneath into some sort of um, subterranean vault or tunnel. Um, so lots of work uh, has been done there. And we're, the scaffolding is supported on these enormous railway sleepers to spread the weight to ensure that there are no issues with any subsidence under the scaffolding. The reason why the scaffolding weighs so much is partly because, and it's not yet on, but it's coming shortly, is there's going to be a very substantial temporary roof. So a crane is coming in a couple of weekends time, and that will lift huge girders, which will link the front of the scaffolding to the back, and uh, a roof will go on, and that will allow um, the current roof to be safely worked on. So the slates will be removed, um, stacked up, and uh, the copper uh, um, uh, dressings will be taken up, replaced in lead, um, and the slates will go back, um, and the, the timbers will be repaired as part of that element of the project, which is a very large part of our cost for the capital works. I'm sure. Do we know as a matter of interest just how much all this scaffolding weighs? Um, well, <laughs> Is it more I did, than the Queen Mary? <laughs> I, 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 I'm very interested in all this. I went out when they were plate testing, which is when they were they're testing the, the, the capacity of the floor to take the, the, the load. And they had a huge digger um, uh, resting on a, 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 a tiny sort of area. And it apparently was eight tonnes of weight per about uh, a, 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 a metre. Um, so that's the kind of floor loading that we need for, for, for this to ensure it's safe. So a lot of weight, um, but hopefully now it's um, there we aren't going to have any issues. Good. Um, moving on, um, uh, there is also um, a, a whole sort of compound, a whole little world we're building around the North Wing to allow our um, contractors to safely service the building and um, uh, trucks and other vehicles to be safely parked away from the public. So here's our compound um, opposite 
the um, church of St. Bartholomew the Less on the north side of the building. And I just thought that you'd like to see um, uh, this very sweet little dog called Bear. Now, Bear comes with the um, uh, a company that's installing the hoarding. So they come every day and Bear jumps out and plays with his tennis ball. It's all rather nice. So um, the difficulty is keeping my staff in the office um, when they want to go out and, and, and play with the dog. But, you know, I think this is all part of the... Um, the, the 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 fun of um, um, the project unfolding and of course updated news as of today the fountain has come back on to to herald the clocks going forward that's, hasn't that's it? right so it's all it's all action in the courtyard at the moment um and here is our hoarding going up at the moment and being painted um uh, and then uh, just a few um impressions of what the hoarding will look like when it's fully installed so um, we're going to put graphics, information about the project, obviously new signage. Um, so while the building is wrapped up, and um, this is a very um, uh, misleading view because in fact, there will be a, a scaffolding behind which will be um, uh, wrapped, wrapped in, 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 um, in, uh, in shrouded in, in plastic too. So you will not see the building, you will see the, the, the hoarding and the scaffolding. And uh, it's important that people know and understand what's going on and people are curious and because we're opening up the project to the public, um, we didn't want it to be um, uh, too mysterious. Sure. And there's another view of our hoarding. And of course, inside the building, this is how the Great Hall looked before we started the project. And uh, this is how it's looking today. So we've just started work um, laying the services underneath the floor of the Great Hall, which is actually a, a, a important part of our project. And there's an awful lot going on with our first phase of works, which you won't see work to install services, mechanical and electrical um, systems under the skin of the building to make sure that it works properly, to make sure that there's um, adequate um, coverage for um, the needs of the Great Hall and building into the, into the future, conservation, heating, all those kinds of things. Do we get so far any sense of when anybody last tackled these big issues within the Great Hall itself? Well, one of the fascinating things of doing any project like this is when you start sort of lifting the skin of the building, you make discoveries. And of course, the last major phase of works here was in the early 1960s when the west end of the building was rebuilt after bombing and there was a, a very substantial upgrade to the, the Great Hall itself well, when this low level panelling was added around the perimeter of the hall. Um, the floor was taken up in its entirety. Some very serious um, steel girders were put in to strengthen the floor, um, which we've discovered now, of course, taking the, the floor up. We've seen all that work. And what you're looking at in this slide is the uh, are the original deal pine boards um, of the hall, which run from north to south and um, width, the width of the hall. Um, they were all taken up in the 60s, put down again, sanded, and um, they are a bit bashed around. I was going to um, say, they don't look very highly polished. No, and then what happened, of course, is they laid an oak floor over the top of this floor, which runs in the opposite direction, and those boards have all been carefully taken up, stacked. I think we've got a slide showing. So that's some of our contractors lifting some of the boards. And I think in the, the top of that slide, you can see them stacked, the, the oak boards stacked in the kitchen. These will be repaired, uh, stained uh, a darker color and very carefully relayed. Um, and they, uh, they've all been numbers. They've all been numbered. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, it, it, We've, we've also made sure that people know where the holes are, as you can see on that slide. Um, and what's fun is taking up the, the floor is the little discoveries one made. And the top of the slide there, here you'll see that someone's, one of the workmen from the 60s has taped a packet of senior service cigarettes into the underside of one of these boards. There's a bit, there's a bit of packing to level it out. And then this thing at the bottom is a, is a wooden wedge, which... Um, was discovered under the floorboards and it was very carefully signed by the carpenter from 1964, a certain Mark Caulfield, sorry, Martin Caulfield, 
not Mark. No, no I, 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 not. I think <laughs> Professor Mark Caulfield, our, our, our very own, uh, Vice President of the School of uh, uh, Vice President of Health of the School of Medicine, uh, who, who tells us he's he's not related to uh, to this particular individual, yeah. as far as we know. But it's fun. <laughs> And the important thing when we're undertaking any kind of work in a, a room of this importance, of national importance, any intervention you make, you need to be very, very careful and have the best craftsmen at work. And we have an, an exceptional team of joiners and carpenters um, lifting the boards and making sure that, that what you don't want is, is services engineers to be lifting the boards. We want to make sure that people who know how to to, to deal with um, uh, timber um, are, are doing it. And the team on this project are, I, I used at the great at the Painted Hall at Greenwich um, and, and they are tried and tested and trusted. Um, and now and this, is all, this is all about protection, isn't it? Because goodness me, within the Great Hall, we've got all these fantastic artifacts and yet we've got this heavy work going on. So tell us a bit more about that. Well, the first thing we did in the North Wing was to um, look at all the works of art in situ, remove those which were actively in the way of our work. So we, we moved, for example, the bust of Queen Victoria and Sydney Waterloo, which were at the east end of the hall. Um, they're quite hefty, and it took a specialist team of um, sculpture uh, conservatives to to, to take those down and, and, and they've been re removed temporarily to the museum. Um, but we're keeping the other artworks in situ and the, the importance of that is I don't want things to be leaving sight or being moved around too much unless we really have to. Because that's often where damage occurs and where, God forbid, you can actually mislay I was going to say, things, items. That things get, must go missing. From so, so we're boxing up and protecting the work. So here's the fireplace on the north side of the hall. Um, being, it's been boxed in. Uh, the painting of St Bartholomew and Barb has, has since been um, protected too with plastic. So we are um, ensuring that any vulnerable works um, within the hall, within the Hogarth stair, are properly and professionally protected ahead of the project. Um, you can see the services being laid under the floor there. Um, the idea with laying services um, as part of this project is that um, you want it to be as light touch as possible. You want it to be um, flexible, adaptable and removable. So there are these little wire trays under the floor and um, we will obviously lay all our cables, but we'll also be able to lay new cables and draw new cables through in the future if we need to, without taking up the floor. So there's a bit of a future proofing element to that. And lastly, you can see um, some sample staining of the panelling in the Great Hall. Um, you, most people who've been there know this is a slightly kind of sauna, orangey colour, the timber. Um, I'm very keen to darken it down to give it back that sort of um, special atmosphere, make it look a bit less institutional. So we've got a, a, a variety of stains. So um, these are stains that you've actually put in as, as sample panels, because yeah. I think uh, some people will already be familiar with the, the paint samples that you put in on the yeah, wall right, to yeah. indicate various shades. But uh, but the public hasn't seen these uh, these stain samples, have they? They, they haven't, um, and uh, we'd love to sort of have a vote, but I'm afraid it's going to be um, um, uh, my decision <laughs> to avoid the arguments. So I think we're the design team, we our architects per cell and our team. We've talked a lot about it, but we're going to go for a much darker stain for the walls, and we'll probably be nearer the one on I think your the, the right of your slide. Sure. Um, and then, of course, there's the wonderful atmospheric roof space in you know, a virtually untouched um, early 18th century space with um, huge um, timbers, an extraordinary piece of engineering um, of the time. Um, the original roof uh, structure survives intact. There are various sort of um, strengthening and, and, um, and uh, improvements have been done since. Um, but it's a it's it's a it's a very very beautiful and um, slightly haunting space. And what about what about this? Is this graffiti yeah. that I can see? Yeah, little sort of um, uh, little names etched into the plaster work. This is from 1821 um, from somebody who was up there probably doing some maintenance. 
Um, it's interesting, you often find this, and we found this at Greenwich too, um, with buildings which are important, that have a big public function, um, uh, the workmen who, who um, attend to them quite like to leave a mark. I think they realise that by doing this, it's sort of, it's, you know, they're being associated with this great building. I don't think, I wouldn't encourage it as part of this project, <laughs> but it's quite nice to have these relics and we'll see some more later on. They were, on they were probably the saying exactly there. the same thing in 1825. Whoever was in charge then said, now, whatever you do, boys, yeah. don't go scribbling on the artifacts. <laughs> and uh, below you can see the clock mechanism, um, which is a, a wonderful relic to this dates from the early 19th century. And uh, shortly it will be removed by Thwaites and Reed, the great clock um, um, company established in the 18th century. I think Thwaites and Reed go back a long way. And they will be overhauling the mechanism and they'll also be attending to the clock face, repainting, restoring that. So the clock will be um, operational and looking um, splendid when we finish the project. Because it hasn't been operational now for a while, has no, it? No, and it's sad. It should be. It's facing the, the courtyard. It, it, it's, uh, it needs to announce the, itself. The, the square. The square. The, the square. Sorry, the square yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, there was an option for it to, to chime every hour, but we thought that might drive the patients of the hospital slightly crazy so we decided to silence the mechanism but it can be unsilenced at any time in the future well maybe we turn it back on again for view day on special occasions like that well, that's a good idea yeah let's yeah. see whether we can do that here of course is that great hogarth stair with those huge canvases by william hogarth paul bethesda and uh, uh the good samaritan um and that famous view of the nurses um being positioned rather kind of rigidly on the staircase and look at the, the paintings. And of course, with those lamps, which have disappeared uh, for the last many years. So what news is that? Tell us more. Well, lighting in the Hogarth stair is a very important part of this project. As many of you will know, who've been in the, the space um, in the past, the current lighting scheme is unsatisfactory. There's a lot of glare, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reflection. There's lots of visible lighting units which are ugly and we don't want to be on display. So we've done a we, we've worked with a lighting designer to produce a new scheme to hide as many of the um, fittings as possible, to light the paintings obliquely so we can avoid any reflections. Um, and uh, we're also aiming to reinstate these rather handsome cast iron mule post lamps. Um, which are here pictured in the 1960s. Um, they were removed at some point in the 60s or 70s. They've gone. There's no trace of them. However, um, I have, I think, found a, um, a, an antique lamp dealer in Beckenham who has in his garage some examples of these new post lamp no. lanterns, and I'm going to visit him on Friday. Oh, now, wow. if they fit the bill, we may not use the exact same lanterns, but we can use them to inform the design of some new uh, new post lamps. It'd be lovely to put these back. They wouldn't carry any, um, uh, they would be decorative rather than, a, and they would like the staircase itself, the, the treads of the staircase for visitors rather than the paintings. Um, but I think it would be, it would be um, um, rather um, lovely to, to reinstate these lost features. And here is our team on the left. We have our site manager, um, Pat, and our uh, pro uh, project manager from our contractor side, Fleur, our painting conservators there, um, Stephen Payne, um, one of his colleagues, Sophie, um, discussing the, the, the hall and the, the um, impending conservation work to the paintings. And also this view down, looking at the great chandelier, this beautiful, beautiful um, timber carved chandelier from 1740 donated by um, Dr. Frake or Freak, who was a friend of Hogarth's. Who, who himself was a Dorset man because we've had correspondence with members of the Barks community who live down there and, and John Freak is is held in very high regard in the village where he originated. Yeah, he was a, a great man and uh, he, as I said, he donated this beautiful object. It's going to be carefully taken down 
um, and we're hoping to carry out the cleaning and conservation of the chandelier in the Great Hall itself in the little compound so uh, the public will be able to, to see this work, learn about it during our, um, our conservation tours. Um, so um, that'll be another thing to, to look out for. Um, elsewhere, the other things going on in this view on the right, we've got a sort of separate um, uh, airlock tunnel um, going underneath that gives uh, the archive team access to the archive store safely. So they're able to come in um, and bring up documents without interfering with the um, ongoing works within the staircase. So the hallway itself has been sectioned off exactly. from the from the stairs i see what it's you very mean. important to separate any public access from the contractor site and this of course is something we'll be doing um as well as part of our um, conservation tours um just a few a couple of photographs of the exterior of the building um on the left we have um uh, a detail of the, the stonework portland stone facing um, this, of course, the Portland stone was added in the 19th century. The original uh, stone for the, all the wings at Bath was a, was a bath stone, a sort of honey colour stone. But it, it couldn't stand the London atmosphere, it could it? It didn't fare very well um, and had to be replaced um, gradually over the course of the first two or three decades of the 19th century. Um, the, the, there are cracks and there are some... Um, issues with the, the stonework of the north wing and um, we've been up the scaffolding now and, and we're, we're, we're fairly comfortable that they're, they're, it's not any worse than we'd um, scoped this, originally. This didn't happen when you put the scaffolding up? This no, this probably. would have been a, a crack probably caused by a rusting iron cramp or something within or some movement within the building. So this all, these will all need to be repaired. The stonework will be clean but gently clean so it won't look bright brown spanking new like the, the west wing. Uh, we want to, um, we don't want to overclean and sort of sterilize the, the elevation of the building. And that's a, a difficult balance to strike. And here, of course, is the clock, is the clock face. And um, this will be taken down shortly, actually, and taken off to create some really to be um, restored. And um, some exciting action from last week. Um, here is our magnificent charter window. Which of course predates the Great Hall predates itself the great by Hall. at least a hundred years. Yeah, it? Um, the, there's glass from the 1620s in this stained glass window. Um, it was in another hall on the um, hospital site prior to the building of the North Wing. Um, it um, is a very, very beautiful thing and getting close to it as part of this process of um, preparing for its conservation has been, has been a real privilege. Um, on the right, you can see a scaffold tower with our team from Holy Well Glass, a specialist stained glass conservation um, firm based in Wales in Somerset. And uh, last week, they began the process of removing the charter window, um, which was um, pretty nerve wracking. And I think we have a film um, coming up. Well, here are just some of the details. It is, it is really exquisite. The closer you get to this window and then um, you can see some of the details. The charter, um, lines from the charter are actually um, um, legible on the stained glass in this section. That's fantastic. And then there are some signatures in the glass. You can just see on the, the bottom slide there, the signature from uh, 1720, uh, sorry, 17, 1797 or 92. Um, There's obviously a lot going on with this window in the 1790s, whether it was having an overhaul, but there are quite a few signatures from this date and etched into the glass. Rather lovely things to discover. Now, you mentioned, of course, the uh, the restoration of the, of the charter window is one particular aspect that is held in very high regard by, by a whole number of people. So uh, massive thanks to uh, the Barts League of Nurses, of course, who've given us a considerable sum of money uh, to uh, to put specifically towards the the restoration of the of the charter window, uh, as indeed have the uh, the Pilgrims Trust. Yeah, they? the Pilgrim Trust and, and the uh, Barts League of Nurses, we're very very grateful for their contribution, which is enabling this project to to happen. Um, and um, moving on, Robert, can I just click on? Oh. Whoops. 
we seem to have, uh, there we are. So you can see another one of these signatures and the window gradually, um, uh, gradually sort of disappearing. It's in, I think it's in three or four sections um, and removing it was quite an undertaking. And I don't know if this, this will work, but we have a little film showing the, remo the removal of the first upper panel. And I was filming this um, and I have to tell you, it was pretty scary, but I, I trusted the team and they didn't let us down. Okay. Do we know when it was the last time that it was taken out of its frame like this? It, it, it may have been. I, I think there was some damage in the Second World War, so I think it was. But I don't think it was removed. I think it was. Um, it was repaired in situ. So there it is. The safe removal of the panel. And here it is um, being sort of carefully packed in traveling frames and taken off for um, repair and conservation. Um, and it will be um, reinstated um, probably towards the end of this year. Um, and uh, it's, uh, as well as being beautifully repaired, it's going to be properly lit for the first time. So it will be a real um, it will really emerge as one of the key features of the Great Hall, which it hasn't really been for a while. And I suppose it's it's fair to mention that actually the glass in the Great Hall has not been shown uh, to good effect for, for some while. So a whole load of, of grime has built up, not just on the charter window, but on the glass generally for a whole variety of reasons, hasn't it? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of work to do uh, on all the all the windows in, in the hall. And um, the, the, the charter window... Uh, was also bowing very badly. There were great sort of swells where the the iron framework and the, the lead was beginning to sort of part company. So this was really um, not a moment too soon to get this out. The other windows will be um, overhauled, repaired, repainted, um, uh, and 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 put back um, over the next uh, six months or so. And in fact, here is some work being undertaken on the. Uh, uh, on one of our sash windows. So the idea is that um, we're, we're, obviously there are, I can't know exactly how many, but I think there are over a hundred windows on the North Wing. Because of course they're on more than one level, aren't they? Yes, it's there it's are. uh, easy to forget. A lot that. of them. None of them are original, um, but many of them date from the early 19th century. Um, the earlier uh, windows would have had some chunkier glazing bars there's a couple that may survive from the 18th century um, in the attic space, but these windows are mostly um, 19th and, and some 20th century um, uh, windows too. So they'll be carefully repaired. Um, uh, we're going to, the idea is to retain as much of the fabric as possible. So uh, to piece in repairs rather than to replace, because we want to keep the authenticity of the original fabric. And some of the window seals, particularly at the East End, are completely shot, rotted away, so they will be replaced. And the windows will also be given a little insulation strip. It'll be invisible, and that will help to keep them airtight and uh, prevent heat loss, and that's important too. Um, we're going to be painting, we repainted the windows, obviously, and on the right-hand side, here is us. Here are, are the team and me um, puzzling over what colour to paint them. I think we're going to go, if you look on the windowsill, there's a sort of dark colour and a slightly lighter greenish stone colour. I think we're probably be going for the lighter version, but we're going to paint two samples on this window and see. So is, 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 that, is that Magnolia then? Uh, Magnolia. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a heritage colour. Um, but the the, the important thing is that this won't match exactly the white windows in the, the rest of the square. and um, But I think it will distinguish the North Wing, it will raise the bar, um, it will look very beautiful. I think it will look much more distinguished with a slightly different colour to the windows. And I'm hoping it will then persuade the rest of the hospital to paint their windows the same colour. Well, I, I won't hold my breath on that one, Bill. <laughs> but I, I do like the way, and I'm sure that uh, everyone appreciates the 
the way in which uh, you're trying to get the the colors, if I can use that in the general sense, to complement each other, both inside and outside the wing. Yeah, it's really important. Color choice is important. It needs to be based in historical understanding of previous paint schemes. Um, you need to choose something that's appropriate, that um, has been used preferably in similar buildings of similar status successfully. Um, and um, that you need to be very careful. So that involves doing lots of samples, standing back, thinking, discussing. And of course, there are certain unknowns. Until we've cleaned the, the, the surrounds of the windows, we won't know exactly what the contrast is between the two of those and the, the paint colors. So it's getting these details right. And um, I do emphasize it's really, really important not to, to rush into um, a choice of color before you need to. Obviously, we've been driven by the timetable of the project. But it's making these um, uh, decisions and making the appropriate choice of finishes, which will really make this project stand out. That's my thing, anyway. Yes. Wow. Now, this is what we've all been waiting for, hasn't it? Because we have been trumpeting loud and long about the way in which the, the Great Hall will be open to visitors not just within the Barts community, but outside to be able to see what is happening as it's happening. So come on, tell us more. Well, I'm pleased to, pleased to say this is the first public announcement that you can now start to book your places on the open access conservation tours of the North Wing. They will start in July. Um, there will be two public tours a day um, and there will be special tours for the friends and uh, you will have exclusive, Friends of Arts will have exclusive um, access to book their tickets um, first. And uh, Robert, I think you'll be circulating a link. I certainly will. So oh. all these, uh, the booking for these slots will be available on uh, Eventbrite. And I know many of you will be familiar with that technology. Uh, and the size of each tour will be limited to 15 people, uh, not simply for practical reasons, but for, for health and safety reasons. Now, of course, you might say, well, one a month for friends doesn't sound a great deal. Rest assured that we'll be keeping a close eye, won't we, Will, on the way in which those uh, those tours book up. Uh, and if they prove uh, even more popular than we think, then we'll we'll make additional uh, dates available for friends, won't yeah. we? The, the tours are a, a major um, part of our project and logistically they're challenging. Um, I'm, I'm delighted to say we have recruited our um, team, two of our three key engagement posts have now been filled. Um, Caroline Hampson, some of you, you will get to know Caroline and her uh, colleague um, Kate So, who's um, um, the, our, our researcher. Um, together they are going to be planning, uh, writing and um, organising the tours, organising the volunteers who are going to be giving them. And there's a shout out to volunteers you might want to um, come forward to help us. Um, and uh, the tours will um, uh, involve coming up into the building from the West End. So the sort of um, uh, the, 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 the Peggy Turner room end of the building where you'll go up. So, 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 not, so not the Hogarth stair at this stage, yes. Um, you will go up to the, uh, what's called the Guild Room, where you'll sit and have a briefing, um, a short um, uh, uh, film to give you um, all the information you need. Um, and then you will be able to go into the Great Hall. There'll be more um, uh, uh, sort of uh, possibilities to look at um, conservation tools and architectural features on the ground floor. And then for those of you with a head for heights, you will be able to climb up now. This this slide just shows a little scaffold tower in the corner. There'll be a full scaffolding um, uh, stretching the the the, the um, full extent of the hall at high level, and you'll that, be able to that, climb that's, up. That's across and lengthwise, that's so right. it'll be like a, having a different it's story a within it's, the great it, hall. It, there'll be a, a high level deck. Visitors will be, go, be able to go up to the deck and uh, watch the conservation work to the beautiful plaster ceiling underway. They'll be able to engage and talk to the conservators, see the techniques they're using and the methods. Um, and lastly, you'll also be able to go into the Hogarth stair to a viewing platform and see the work going on there. 
So it's a real opportunity to follow the project to learn more about the techniques and the, the, the highly specialized work undertaken to ensure that this um, uh, treasure of a building is being um, is being properly and properly and appropriately um, looked after. Now we've talked about the shade that you've chosen for the paneling, the wood paneling itself, that to be darker than uh, we've uh, experienced for the, the last few decades. Remind us, if you will, about the um, the background paint uh, that, that you've chosen. Yeah, the current pet paint scheme, which dates, I think, to the 1980s or earlier, is a sort of cream, yellowy cream colour. Um, the original colour, as far as you know, was an olive green. That's the James Gibbs colour, because James Gibbs, the architect of the, the redeveloped hospital, including the North Wing in the 18th century, um, the architect of this stupendous space, the Great Hall. Um, so olive green was his original colour. Pretty strong. We painted a sample on the wall. It would look rather amazing, but I think just be slightly too much. Um, so we're going to go for a, a stone, a stony colour, so a more uh, less yellowy, a more green stone colour for the walls, which um, looks very smart um, and um, which everybody seems to like. And uh, that will be the background colour for the hall. The ceiling will have a slightly different uh, paint finish and that's all still being um, decided. Um, but um, th and then there'll be a whole there'll be a whole raft of works to conserve the donor board. So we're not going to repaint the donor board, but we'll be repairing any loss um, and addressing any major problems with them. Let's talk about the donor boards because of course we're back to money again, aren't we? And the the sums that are recorded uh, on those uh, boards uh, appear quite low level by present day standards, but of course they were huge sums of money uh, back in the day. And hasn't some work been going on in trying to trace the present day descendants of some of these donors? Yeah, well, there are about 3,000 names in the wall of the, of the Great Hall. On the um, south side, they are principally um, people who gave money to become governors of the hospital. And becoming a governor was an important position. It also gave you certain perks, it enabled you to recommend people to be treated at the hospital. Um, and it was 50 pounds and 52 guineas become a governor. And and this was at a time when, let's not forget, that there were about 250 governors of the hospital yeah. in those years. Yeah. Well, but... A lot of them. And I think that the, uh, the governors who had an active role in the running of us would have been a lot smaller. Um, and then on the other side, you have the much more substantial sums, the legacies um, left to the hospital. Um, and we've had all these names now recorded. They're in a spreadsheet. Um, I, think I, can, I think I worked out that about there's about four, three or four hundred thousand pounds in total on of the historic amounts. In the and and what's that worth in today's money? Well, it's it's very difficult to say because they have how, different stages. How you they? judge it, but yeah. um, you know, um, um, many millions. And uh, as many of you will know, we've restarted this tradition, um, and the the names on the hall stopped in 1905, and we are adding our own benefactors who have given money to the restoration project and uh, we've already got a sort of a whole window reveal of, of new names um, inscribed and, and if anybody here is interested there's there's plenty more real space to be covered so we're delighted to be able to continue that tradition. Excellent right before we um, move on to the the final stages let's just uh, see if we can handle a few uh, questions do uh, make use of the Q&A button I can see a couple of buttons sitting there uh, or a couple of questions sitting there already uh, let me just do mention though that uh, we've been talking about the whole tours and uh, you've been showing us some of the kit that uh, people will be invited to wear let me reach over here so for the duration of your tour, you will be required to wear a Bart's Heritage hard hat together with a bright yellow high-vis jacket, um, all part of the, uh, the safety aspects of the project. Uh, and of course, you can have a, a group photograph before you, before you set off, can't you? Uh, like, uh, like many other more, uh, even more famous tours worldwide when uh, people line up for that sort of thing. The difference with these tours is it will genuinely be a once in a lifetime opportunity. This isn't going to happen again, I hope, for another generation at least. So um, take your chance if you can. I fear that 
we're going to be oversubscribed. Um, but as I said, we're keen to get particularly as many of the friends up there as possible because the friends have been, you know, you've all been wonderful supporters and uh, we have been, we've benefited from the generosity of the friends and indeed of the whole wider Barts family. Um, we really enabled this project to happen. And it's not simply the donations from members of the Barts community. Uh, you've been fantastic in spreading the word. I, I know this is something that I go on about every time I write to you in our monthly e-shots, but it really does uh, reap dividends. So do please continue to uh, get in touch with uh, your contemporaries from back in the day, from the nursing and medical communities in particular, and uh, tell them what's going on. Because I continue uh, to come across people, uh, old Bart's men and women, uh, who are unaware of what's been happening. And uh, we, we get them on our mailing list and, uh, and, and try and bring them up to date. So without further ado, let's just have a look at some of these uh, questions. So somebody has said, what was the name of the Dorset chandelier maker? Now, of course, this was the John Freak chandelier. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, I'm. Uh, I think I'm right in saying it wasn't the chandelier that was made in Dorset. It was John Freak himself. John Freak was made in Dorset. Who, who was <laughs> who was born in Dorset? Yes. Yeah. Uh, do, do you know anything about the uh, the make of the manufacturer um, it, of the it, chandelier? It's an, it's an excellent question. Um, last year, uh, a um, art art expert came round, and he seemed to think he knows who the who the original um, uh, manufacturer of the chandelier was. Um, so I'm going to reconnect with him and I hope to be able to, 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 to answer that question. But it, it fits into a, um, a style um, uh, of, of, of chandeliers making of that time, which helps us to identify it. Okay. Um, now, important question here. Will the Eventbrite bookings for the tours include details of disabled access, especially to the, the scaffolding platforms? Now, presumably, yeah. Yeah, at the west end of the building, we've already got the lift to bring people up to first yeah. level. So um, uh, they'll be, it'll be fully accessible up to the, the ground floor of the Great Hall. Um, unfortunately, getting up to the deck itself, there will not be a lift. That's not possible. Um, it's not logistically possible to put a lift in. For, for such a short period. Um, so, but the important thing is um, any anyone coming into the hall that can't get up to the top deck, there'll be plenty of opportunity to engage and learn about the project at the lower level. So we would encourage people to come no matter what their access um, requirements are. Um, we'd love to be able to put a lift up to the scaffolding. Um, we did at Greenwich, but that was for um, uh, over a year and a half and it was a, it was a much bigger, um, public access project and it's just not viable or commercially viable to be able to do it in this instance. And you talk about commercial viability which leads us nicely, nicely on to the next question which is about the cost of these tours. Uh, now presumably there'll be a differential price structure for friends and for members of the public. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah you'll have to look the, the final decision is being made today but I think we're looking at something like £10 for um, uh, normal tickets and i think it's i think it's half price for friends so there's a substantial dis discount I, I don't quote me on that it may be not quite half price um, but there will be a substantial discount for friends and that's Fair one enough. of the perks of joining as a friend so um spread the word good um and um can we remind people how to put their names forward well of course it's uh uh, our colleague Caroline, who is coordinating the, the volunteers to, to run those tours. Um, so if you uh, write either to me or to Will, yeah, um, we'll pass those on. We can I pass mean, those we, names we've on. We've advertised volunteers. We've filled, I think, now already 20 of the 30 initial places. So, um, But we are keen to, to engage people who know the building well, got a history here. You can tell a tell the story of the hospital itself and the working life of the hospital because that's an important part of the story we're telling. It's the whole contextual issue isn't yeah. it? So yeah. it's not just a building in isolation yeah. it's part of uh, this 900 year old establishment. Yeah and that leads to the, the the final important element of this project which is is the link between heritage and health and health and well and heritage and well-being. So this isn't a project in isolation from the hospital. We're working in partnership with the clinical teams, with the hospital itself, 
to look at ways in which this beautiful historic building can benefit staff, patients, the families of patients, as well as the general public. And uh, we um, have done a huge amount of work um, designing activities and projects which will, we will be rolling out over the next two years. And um, we did some um, wonderful pilot projects um, last year, which were very successful. Um, and uh, I think we've probably, I think we've got a few couple of slides before we finish off um, uh, relating to that work. We, we ran a series of activities last year um, to sort of pilot and, and look at ways in which um, the hall could um, be a place where people could take refuge, reflect, restore, enjoy the calmness, the serenity, the beauty of the space, um, as you would a church or any other historic building, it's nothing new. But what's new here is to do it within a healthcare setting and be able to measure some of those benefits. And um, we identified a whole range of areas where the hall, I think, could make and North Wing could make a big difference to the lives of um, uh, the hospital community. And one thing, for example, we identified was that people who came to visit relatives who are undergoing treatment here were often um, for long periods of time waiting between appointments and it often feeling very anxious, uh, worried, you know, and, and in need of something to, to, I suppose, take their minds off things and to connect them with the, the, the content, the sense of this being an institution which for 900 years has delivered um, uh, uh, care to the to, to Londoners, and um, I thought we'd just finish with um, just a few of the responses we had to some of these tours that we we um, undertook as part of our pilot program, and the, the last one particularly re really moved me. Um, uh, it was from somebody that that came in, saw one of our posters for the activities, uh, came in and. Uh, um, joined in some of the work we were doing, which was uh, some sort of slow looking, some 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 art making work in the hall, and um, and uh, uh, said, you know, it's amazing. I'm so glad I saw that poster. It's been so good for me. So as well as being a wonderful asset, a new cultural asset, as long as being the fact that the hall will be open to the public for the first time properly in its history. Um, and will be a new addition to the cultural scene in the City of London. Underpinning it all this will be this sort of core of work we're doing to explore ways in which the hospital and the historic elements of the hospital can work together for the mutual benefit of, of the hospital community. This is a terribly important aspect of the whole project, isn't it? Because I know that some people will perhaps naively go away with the idea that we're simply trying to create a museum piece, yeah. that we're yeah. simply uh making uh, sprucing things up a little but yeah. it's it's a lot bigger than that isn't it and this and this aspect uh we had our hand forced some four years ago uh, with the onset of covid before we were ready for it yeah. so we made spaces within the north wing available during the pandemic particularly for uh, hospital staff at that stage yeah. to simply step back take a breather from that incredibly tense time uh, and, and recharge, but now that has led us into this important work that you, that you that you've described. Yeah, and this work has been supported by the lottery and other funders, um, and it's uh, it's in the DNA of the project. It's really important. Of course, the hall will continue to be available for commercial hire. That will provide the revenue, which will help us look after the building into the future. We don't want it to get back to the same position as we. We, we found ourselves before we started the project. Um, so there'll be a commercial element, which we're very open about, which I think everyone understands has to happen. But we want to make the most of the building and its proximity to the working hospital, this elite establishment, this centre of excellence that's been around for over 900 years now, um, and, and, and take the energy and inspiration from the great work being undertaken in the, in the clinical side of Burt Hospital. Um, and hopefully help them too. Excellent. Well, we've come to the end of uh, another fascinating uh, webinar. Will, thank you so much for your for your time and expertise. Uh, it's been great to have a, a catch up, and I'm sure our, our our audience will join me in uh, in thanking you for bringing us up to date with progress. 
Um, I get a, uh, a regular view as one of the trustees, but nevertheless, to be able to, uh, after this uh, this pause, as I said since our last webinar, to give everybody the chance to uh, to to get up to date with progress, particularly now that the heavy lifting has started. And what I hope to do uh, in the months to come uh, is to provide uh, regular news in our monthly updates. Uh, but I'm sure uh, people will welcome hearing back from you. And also, we'd like to hear what more you would like to hear. Which of our, our other specialists would you like to hear from? Might it be the uh, particular set of contractors? Maybe even the uh, the paint specialists, the stonemasons. They've all got uh, fascinating stories to tell, have they not? Pro providing they're happy to appear in front of camera, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it's part of their contract. Public engagement is built into the project, so we'll. And we'll be happy to do that. and Caroline and Kate are, are health and heritage experts. Yeah, so uh, yeah. yeah, lots more to come, and uh, we hope that uh, you'll be joining us on that occasion as well. So. From Will and myself, uh, bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.